All right, ready for our first case. Please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Uh, Johnny Evans, 398657. All right, Johnny, uh, you heard the introductions. We'll ask you questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. All right, Johnny Evans, DOC number 398657. You're a first class offender, pro eligibility date 9 1 2025, good time 6 8 2081, full term 9 2 2096. You have a 99 year sentence. You're, uh, you had a commutation of sentence by Governor Edwards, uh, signed the 24th day of March 2023. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, would you answer Ms. Renata's questions, please? Good morning, Mr. Evans. Good morning, ma'am. So I won't go, you've been through the process before with the clemency, so I won't go into a lot of the details, but I do have some things to say or ask you. Uh, as uh, Mr. Kelsey mentioned, the governor signed your uh, commutation in March of this year, and that was, well, you were sentenced in August of 98 for second degree murder. You got a life sentence. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And he's he, you had a, a pardon board hearing in October of 2020, got a favorable recommendation, and he signed. And the commutation was to 99 years with parole eligibility after having served 28 years. How long have you served? Uh, close to 26, ma'am. 26. That was a little concerning to us because because initially, uh, after having served 28 years, would make your parole eligibility date. September 1st of 2025. I'm sure you've got a copy of your ma revised master prison record. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's been revised again today because you, uh, because your sentence was commuted, you're now eligible for parole under Act 122, which yes. moved the parole eligibility dates up to the date he signed the commutation. So we were a little concerned, but you are. Uh, eligible to be seen today and to be considered for parole. So you were granted, uh, received a favorable recommendation uh, by the board and the reason stated at that time was conduct and other improvement, favorable recommendation by the folks there at the barracks, minor or no past criminal record, you had a low risk score, excellent programs and demonstrated rehabilitation. Has any of that changed? No, ma'am. Um, I would like to ask you this. Uh, your victim was Mr. Pray, Ernest Prater, and, and you were advised at the time of your pardon board hearing there was opposition. There was opposition by the judge, the district attorney, law enforcement, uh, and victim opposition uh, because it was a terribly brutal crime. And, and you're prohibited by law from reaching out to your victim and speaking to him. But let me ask you this. If you were able to say anything to the family of Ernest Prater, what would you say? Uh, I take full responsibility for the actions that, that happened on August 25th, 1997. But I also take full responsibility for the actions that happened before this night because all those actions and, and things that we were involved in led to this night. And for that, I'm sorry, I'm very remorseful for it. I pray that it was healing for the Prater family, for Mr. Ernest Prater Sr. and also his child, he had a child that I knew. I pray that they're okay and able to get past the situation that led to this, and what happened that night on August the 25th. And I'm, I know that you, you can't, you know, take those, those things back and those actions what happened. But I, I know I've, I've worked hard, very hard each and every day of a better in my life and make who I am today and who you see before you today a better person, better man I've ever been before. And that's what I've done and I've continued to do. Even when I was granted my favorable recommendation, I continue to put my best foot forward and I, I've worked even harder since then to continue that process each and every day. And I, I thank you for the opportunity to have a chance to share that with you. Okay. Tell us about your transition plan. I plan to take full advantage of the parole project and what they have to offer. I met with a lady named Miss Ashley, if I'm not mistaken, and I, I plan to go there and fully commit to whatever it is they have to offer and the steps I have to take to make it 
from there, I do have a, a residency and a job offer. I plan to pursue the employment to the best of my ability and the best I can. And for the most part, you know, just continue what, what I've done here. I build relationships and trust among people that what I've done won't just stop here as part of my transition of assisting and helping and those and what I can do best. Okay, so, so you mentioned uh, after the parole project plan, after you work that plan, where's your residence? Uh, Plaquemine, in Louisiana. Okay. So you're not going to go back to um, Vernon Parish? No, no ma'am. And uh, what's your sobriety plan? Sobriety plan? I, I've never used drugs or alcohol in my life, ma'am. Did you were a drug dealer? Yes, ma'am. All right. You done victim awareness? Yes, ma'am. In fact, I, I not only did victims awareness, I led a victims awareness program here at the barracks with a lady named Tammy Freeman. I orchestrated the first ever program here at the barracks that allowed a victim to come in who was name was April Zipper, and she was a rape victim from college. And she shared her story and was able to get through her story right here at the police barracks on. April 15th, 2021. Thank you. Uh, Captain, anything you'd like to add? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, Johnny has been one of the um, most outspoken people we have here in State Police Barracks ever. Um, and I say that, and Johnny saw my size and decided it'd be a good idea to challenge me to play basketball. And if my memory serves me correctly, um, the team that I was on won that basketball game. Um, now, after said game was over, they were like, no, big brother, we, we got at least two, three, four more games to play. And I was gasping for oxygen and was wishing that they had, you know, some oxygen tanks there. Uh, but Johnny has a big heart. He also facilitated our St. Jude uh, fundraiser last year where we raised a considerable amount of money. Um, he proposed after his um, commutation hearing. He knew that he had a good shot of going home, but he still sat with another offender and wrote up a program to uh, address at-risk use in the community. So he's he's truthful when he says he's considered, he's continued to do the work that is on his heart. He's passionate, and he's very well liked among his peers. So I'm excited for what he can do when he has a little bit more freedom to work his magic. Thank you, sir. I have no other questions. All right. Would you uh, now we'll hear from a brief statement from Ms. from Carrie Meyer. Brief statement, Mr. Carrie. Yes. Um, good morning, Carrie Meyer's Louisiana Parole Project. We're absolutely prepared uh, to help Mr. Evans in his transition. Um, as you can see, he's he's in one of the most trusted positions. Uh, in the Department of Corrections. Um, we have no qualms at all about his compliance. Um, he's been a, a, an excellent uh, asset to the barracks. He'll be an excellent asset to Louisiana Parole Project. Um, and Parole Project obviously will be an asset to his transition. So we just asked this board uh, to consider his parole today favorably. All right, thank you. A brief statement from Ms. Stacy Pozola. Yes, I've known Mr. Evans uh, since July of 2006 uh, from within Elaine Hunt Prison. I coordinate um, volunteer activities there through the Catholic Church. And before Mr. Evans was even aware that there was a possibility of having his sentence commuted, he was serving a life sentence, but he served it with such dignity and such grace and such a mentor to the gentlemen around him, um, whether it was through faith-based activities or just on the yard. Um, I believe in second chances. I've never spoke on behalf of any of the offenders that I've worked with over the last 17 years, uh, but I'd be happy to have Mr. Evans as my next door neighbor 
and he is uh, what makes these type of processes uh, successful and, and good for those coming behind him. Thank you. All right, thank you. Hey, Johnny, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, first of all, thank you all for the opportunity to have this chance. Uh, I also thank the staff here. You know, it's, it's great having a chance to work with them and, and learn. I, I am a son of a police officer, so I don't take their work that they do lightly at all because I grew up with it all my life. And I'm just thankful and I'm, I'm truly remorseful for the damage that I've caused, not only the family, but the community. I think I was a, a pretty upstanding citizen and there was some people that was hurt. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry that I, I let some people down and I, I shouldn't have. I know better. I'm, and I work hard every day. That's why I do what I do. It was never about getting out. It was about making my family proud and then becoming a son that my father raised. I'm thankful for the opportunity. And I thank you all. And, and my mother's watching now. She doesn't know English too well, so it's kind of hard for her. But I, I know that I, I'm become, I've become the man that, that she raised, and I'm thankful. And I'm very sorry for the Prater family and also Ernest's son. And I wish them well, and I pray for their forgiveness each and every day, and I'm thankful. Thank you all very much. All right. Now, pair the boat. Uh, Mr. Evans, you have a uh, birthday coming up later this month. Yes, ma'am. Thanks. You'll be 49. Well, I uh, my vote today is to grant your parole uh, for all the reasons that we've already stated. Um, I would add special conditions um, that you have a curfew, no contact with the family of the victim whatsoever perform eight hours of community service work a month. That ought to be easy for you. You're used to doing that. Uh, and to the parole project uh, transition plan. Good luck to you, sir. All right, Ms. Jackson. My vote is the same, uh, Ms. Revens. You, you've done quite well. And I don't know how uh, Captain Evans allowed you to outdress him today, but he did. <laughs> And so you have done well in my vote is to grant. All right, two votes to grant your parole, Johnny. You've done well. You've put the time in. Uh, really done a great job. Uh, hard to believe you, you're younger than me. I mean, 49? I mean, looks like he's a little older than me, huh? Did I do the math right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, uh, for, you, uh, for the good work you've done, for the things that you, you've done, time you put in, I, my vote is to grant your parole as well. You'll have no contact with the victim. You'll have community service eight hours per month. You'll have NAAA one time a week. Uh, you'll have curfew from 10P to 6A. You'll go to the parole project. So that's your stipulations. Three votes to grant. Your parole's been granted. Do you understand stipulations, John? Yes, sir. Right, good luck to you, man. You'll have a great day. Thank you.